He's back. We've looked at several Wallace and Gromit games recently, two based on the first movie, A Grand Day Out, and one based on the third, A Close Shave. But what about the second movie, The Wrong Trousers? Sure, you can play as the main bad guy, Feathers McGraw, and we even get to see a bit of his personality. But there's no game about this evil little penguin. Why is that? This is Mr. O, this is the new Wallace and Gromit movie, and you are most welcome to my channel, where we look at the best, the worst, the silliest and the grossest board games, and sometimes learn something too. Today, we create a board game based on Wallace and Gromit, Feathers McGraw, and the wrong trousers. And if you stay until the end, I'll tell you how you can get your own copy. Now here's the jingle. Oh, oh, Mr. O, Mr. O, look what's coming up in this video. Reading and playing with Mr. O, singing and silliness with Mr. O. So, I decided to create a game about Feathers McGraw, and the first step was to re-watch The Wrong Trousers. And you should too, because this video contains spoilers. Go on. And while they're doing that, why don't you like, like and subscribe now to Mr. O. Then we'll get back to this silly video. Like and subscribe and away we go. After that, I wrote down a list of all the things I did and didn't like in the other games. Here's a summary. I liked the English village themed board in Fleeced and how every character has their own base. Feathers has a glue factory because he is a psychopath. Fleeced also has great miniatures and a fun rule book. I didn't like the badly designed movers in Rocket Race or the generic ones in Going Crackers. I didn't like the terrible rules and poorly labelled boards. And I didn't like the no doubling back rule. You can check out these videos to hear me moaning about them in more detail. But even though I moan, I do understand that it's difficult to create a good Wallace and Gromit game. It's got to be interesting enough for people like me and you, who play a lot of games, but simple enough for your little brother or your grandma to play. Is that even possible? I had a look at my games collection to see what ideas I could steal, uh, borrow. In the end, I decided to take the movement from Flashpoint, the hidden identities from 13 Dead End Drive, and the two-part gameplay from Jaws. Don't worry if you've not heard of these games. I also ordered some old miniatures from eBay. I designed the board on computer and mounted the designs on cardboard. So, without further ado, here's how to play Penguin Diamond Heist designed by Mr. O. The game is played in two parts, the house and the museum, in that order. Place the boards in a square with Wallace and Gromit's home on West Wallaby Street, face up. You can change the board around each time for a different experience. Place all four characters in their bedrooms with the trousers in the kitchen. Then. Mix up the tokens and place them randomly around the house, face up. This game is best with three players, so take Wallace, Gromit and Feathers character cards, shuffle them and give one to each player. Keep your character a secret. If you have two players, just use Gromit and Feathers. If you have four, use all four. On your turn, you may move any character. Yes, any character. You don't have to move your own character. In fact, it's better if you try not to move them too much because you don't want the other players to know who you are. You have six actions each turn. For one action, you can move one space, pick up an object or put down an object. So for example, I might move one, two, three spaces, pick up the toast, that's my fourth action, then move two more spaces, actions five and six. You can pick up any item you want, but only items that match your character can be used in the museum. 
For example, Wallace can pick up all of these items, but he can only use these three later on. So don't pick up too many items that you cannot use. On the other hand, you don't want to pick up too many items for your character because the other players will guess who you are. For two actions, you may guess who a player is. If you guess correctly, they must reveal their character card. From then on, they can only move their own character. If not, the game continues. When all character cards have been revealed, the home part ends. You'll need to be careful about doing this. If all characters are revealed too early, you won't have enough items for the museum. But wait too long, and another player may have more than you. The home part can also end when one player reaches eight items. When the home part ends, discard any items that don't match your character and turn over your player board. Place your items on your board. This shows how many actions you have in the museum. Everybody also gets four free actions. Turn over the game boards and place the dinosaurs around the museum Note that you cannot walk on dinosaur spaces and add the entry exit spaces too. Wallace and the trousers take the vent shaft, for example, just like the movie. Turn all of the museum items face down and mix them up. Then place two in each room by rolling the black and white dice. Match them up like this. This is called coordinates. It's a useful skill for maths and map reading. Movement and actions are the same as the house part, but you no longer need to guess which characters the other players are using, and now you can only move your own character. Also, remember that everybody has a different number of actions in the museum. The mystery now is that you need to find out what the different items are, and you can do this just by landing on them. Remember though, that it still costs one action to pick something up or put something down. Some items are blank and can be removed. Some are just museum pieces and they stay in place and you cannot now walk over them. When that happens, just move your character to one side. But others are contraptions. Everybody needs to collect a number of contraptions depending on how hard a game you want. Three is easy, six is medium, nine is hard, and so on. Everyone needs to collect the same number of contraptions before they can collect their winning item. Wallace is looking for the key card to get out of the museum. Gromit is looking for the alarm to alert the police. Feathers is looking for the diamond to steal. And if you have four players, the trousers are looking for the remote to be free. There are also lasers which cause you to lose one contraption. Watch out for these. Lasers and blank items are discarded after your turn. At the end of your turn, make up the hidden items on the board to eight by rolling the dice as before. You can choose any room except the room you are in. When you have enough contraptions, the other players decide where to put your winning item, probably very far away from you. They cannot pick it up, but you can. When you pick it up, give back all of your action items, the ones from the house part. This means you can now only move four spaces each turn. Get back to your starting square again and you win. I'm quite happy with how this game turned out. I think it captures something of The Wrong Trousers, which is easily my favorite Wallace and Gromit movie. In the house, you get some sense of mistrust, which Feathers brings into Wallace and Gromit's relationship. And in the museum, you get the tension of sneaking around, avoiding lasers and trying to get out as soon as possible. If you would like to play this game, head over to Just Giving and ask a grown-up to donate as much or as little as they can to my fundraiser for Save the Children. When they donate, they can add their email address as a message to me, and I will send over the PDF for you to print. Please note, I do not own Wallace and Gromit, so this game only has stock images and names. This game is not endorsed by Ardman, and this video is for educational purposes only. 
I will pick one winner at random and send you the copy I used in this video anywhere in the world. I will also include these original vintage figures. Mums, dads, grown-ups and teachers, head over to my second channel where I have suggestions for playing this game and similar ones at home and in the classroom. And you lot, watch the outtakes and tell me in the comments what you think Feathers McGraw will do in the new Wallace and Gromit movie. Keep on gaming. The other players decide where to put your winning item. Probably very far away. When you have He does this on purpose. I mean he I'm sure he literally does this on purpose. He waits until I'm filming and then he meows out Yes you do. You're so troublesome. <laughs>